Good afternoon. Hope everyone's having an easy fast. We're studying Mesil Shasharim, the path of the just, and it's very appropriate that we're discussing this now because this is the book of how to become a better Jew. And we are in the 10 days of repentance, the days between Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, when it is incumbent upon us to improve ourselves, to repent for the sins that we've done, and to become better Jews and better people. And uh, it's a very, it says, call out to God when He's close. And this is the time of year when Hashem is uh, especially close. It says that when a person prays, by himself during the 10 days of repentance, it's as powerful as if he's davening with a minion. We know when you daven with 10 people, it's more potent, you have a better chance of your prayers being answered, but on the 10 days of repentance, even an individual who davens, who prays to God, has that has that power and that potency in his prayer. So it's a very auspicious time for prayer, for spiritual growth, and for becoming uh, better people. So let's, uh, let's continue where we left off. We're on page 482 in the R Scroll edition, of Mesil Shasharm, which is in the middle of chapter 24. And we're talking about fear. Fear of sin. And we first mentioned two types of fear in general, fear in Judaism. One is fear of punishment. Jew, as Jews, we believe that there is such a thing as reward and punishment. We get rewarded for the good things we do, and we get punished for the not-so-good things we do. That's one type of fear. Then there's another type of fear which we discuss, which is a higher level, which is called Yiras Harumus. That's more of a fear of God's awesomeness. We can't even comprehend what God is, how great He is, His uh, His might, His omnipotence, omniscience, uh, the fact that He's eternal. We really can't uh, understand much of it, just what He reveals to us. So that fear is called Yiras Harumus, a fear of God's awesomeness. Now we're going to talk about a third type of fear, which the Ramchal is going to tell us is really a part of that. It's within the umbrella of Yiras Haromimus, a fear of God's awesomeness. So it says the Ramchal again, page 42 in the Art Scroll edition. We're going to be talking about fear of sin. And he says, fear of sin is similar to fear of Hashem's awesomeness. However, it's also like its own separate category. Fear of sin, we're going to see that it is closely related to fear of Hashem's awesomeness, and it's also a separate category by itself. Fear of sin means that a person is afraid that maybe there, in some of his action, there is a little bit of sin. So again, remember, we're talking about a very, very high level. That we're talking about after a person's already achieved piety, uh, all of the, the high uh, humility, all of the high madregos, the high levels that the Ramchal discusses, and now we're talking about fear, fear of sin. So a person is such a high level that he's worried lest there be a little bit of sin mixed in with some of his actions. Now, even if we're not at this level, there's definitely still things we could learn from it. Or maybe... There's a small thing that is that that he did that's not worthy of Hashem's glory. We see the connection between Yiras Haromus, which we were discussing before, fear of Hashem's awesomeness, and fear of sin. Because both fear of sin and fear of Hashem's awesomeness, they both are so that a person shouldn't do anything which is counter to Hashem's glory. A person is lives with such a realization, with such a reality of the existence of God and the awesomeness of God, and is in total awe of the Creator, that he doesn't want to do anything that would, God forbid, be against his will, or would be pagea and his kavod, which would uh, be against God's glory. Amnam. But what is the difference between fear of Hashem's awesomeness and fear of sin? Fear, fear of Hashem's awesomeness is when a person is doing an action, or when he's serving Hashem, or when he's thinking about doing a sin. Or when he's praying. And the person should be embarrassed. 
trembling and ashamed, Mipnei Rum Kvodi Bizbarach, because of the greatness of Hashem. O Bishashem is the Avera Lafana, Vuhu Makaboshi Avera, or he's thinking of doing a sin and he realizes, hey, this is a sin. God doesn't want me to do this sin. So a person doesn't do the sin because he realizes how great God is and God doesn't want him to be sinning. Now this is all Yiras Haromimus, fear of Hashem's, uh, awe of Hashem's awesomeness, fear of his awesomeness. Right? Every time a person doesn't do a sin, he gets a positive mitzvah, fearing Hashem, which is very interesting. Right? You have a desire to eat a cheeseburger and you say, you know what, I really want it, it's a fast day, I'm starving. 2.45 on a fast day, I could really go for a cheeseburger right now, but you know what? God told me not to. And you don't do it. One fulfills the mitzvah of fearing Hashem. Now, that sounds like fear of sin. How is fear of sin different? <laughs> now, he says that Yiras Haromus, the fear of Hashem's awesomeness, is only at the time of serving Hashem. But fear of sin is all time, all the time. Fear of sin means that a person is always worried. Maybe he did a sin or part of a sin against the honor of Hashem. It's called fear of sin. It's a fear of sinning. A person is right, people have fears. People are afraid of spiders. Persons are afraid of sinning. Obviously, they're not the same. Whatever reason is, maybe he's not being careful enough, he's worried, or he's not taking his service of Hashem too seriously, or something's going to be hidden from him, and he's going to end up sinning. On this it says, Ashrei Adam Tami. Praiseworthy is the person who is always afraid. The rabbi said, It's talking about words of Torah. I mean, a person isn't praiseworthy if he's always afraid. You know, he's afraid to go outside, he's afraid to go in the car. That's not praiseworthy. What's praiseworthy is a person is afraid lest he sin, lest he do something against Hashem. They say about the Chazonish. The Chazonish was one of the greatest rabbis in the last 75 years. They say, he said that he, it's his custom that he doesn't do anything without first consulting the four sections of the code of Jewish law in his head before he does any action. That's what the Chazonish said. So that is the person who had fear of sin. Every action he did, he analyzed before he did it to make sure He's not sinning. Now, we shouldn't get upset if we're not on this uh, level. It's obviously a very, very holy level. But, we, you know, we can apply it to certain areas of our lives. You know, we can analyze, or think about what we're doing before we do it. Is, is this a good thing? Is this something Hashem would want me to be doing right now? And now is a very appropriate time, the time between Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. As we try our best to become closer to Hashem, we can think a little bit more in our actions. You know, we're, maybe we're not sure if we should do something or not. You know, does Hashem really want me to do this right now? Okay. He says, a person who has fear of sin, it's not only when he sees a sin in front of him that he's afraid of it, but even when there's no sin in front of him, he's worried, maybe there's a sin here. Maybe there's something going on that he's not aware of. Moshe said about this type of fear, have this fear on your faces so you will not sin. This is the main fear that a person should tremble. Always. Because when a person has this constant fear of sin, he'll never sin. He's always careful. Lest he avoid, lest he avoid a sin. And if he does sin, he'll be like an onus. An onus is a person who was like forced to sin. He didn't have a choice. You know, someone puts a gun to his head and says, Eat this cheeseburger or I'll kill you. That's an onus. You don't have a choice. You don't have to give up your life to not eat a cheeseburger. But this person who is afraid of sinning, since he's so careful all the time, if he ever does sin, it was clearly beyond his control. Now he writes here from Rabbi Cheskel Sarno, in the bottom, that a person shouldn't think that one who has fear of sin is someone living with constant anxiety and dread and having a miserable life. But he said it really comes about from a love. He points out that this level of that we're on now, a fear of sin, comes after the level of chasidus, of piety. We're talking about a person here that wants to do everything for Hashem because he loves Hashem so much. He's just so thankful to Hashem and so and so happy and has a realization that everything that God did for him. So that love is so intense that he just can't handle doing something against someone that he loves so much. He loves God so much, he doesn't want to do a sin. So it's not born out of an anxiety, but rather of a love for Hashem. And he says an example 
uh, of this. This is from uh, Rabbi, a, a Rabbi Kaplan, Rav Avram Elio Kaplan. He says that this is like a father who's dancing at a wedding with his son on his shoulders, or his son or daughter on his shoulders. On one hand, he's very happy. He's rejoicing at a wedding, and he's dancing with his child. But on the other hand, he's a little nervous because he doesn't want his child to fall, so he's very, very careful. He said, that's the type of person we're talking about here. The overarching emotion of the father is joy and happiness, dancing at the wedding. However, in the back of his mind, or maybe a little more than the back of his mind, he's worried that his son will fall. So, so too the person who has this attribute of fear of sin. He's a pious person. He loves God. He lives his life with joy. But he's also careful. He doesn't want to violate and do anything against Hashem. Okay, let's continue. V'yishayahu Amar ben Isaiah said in his prophecy, V'alzeh abit, and this I will look, El'ani unechiruach, on the poor and the uh, lowly, V'charit al-tvari, that are afraid of my word. V'david ha-melech, hishtabak was of Amar, King David was praising this and said, Sarin redafuni chinam undvar ha-pacha libi. Princes ran after me without any reason, but I have feared the word of Hashem. So even though King David was being pursued, the important thing was that he feared the word, word of Hashem. We see that angels, the angels tremble at the words of Hashem because of Hashem's glory. And the rabbis say that where does the heavenly river of fire come out from? From the sweat of the chayas, from the sweat of these very uh, high angels, because they are afraid of Hashem. The angels, even the angels are afraid. Maybe they'll do something that isn't befitting the glory of God. Whenever God's presence reveals itself, far Rod, Varash, Varag, is the, the quakes and trembles and convulses. Humasha Amra Kosovitz, what the verse says, Eretz Raasha, the earth quakes, Afshemayim Natfu, Bipnei Elohim. The heavens drip because of Hashem. The Aimer, Lukarata Shemayim, Yeradata, Mipanecha, Harim Nazolu. If Hashem would open the heavens and descend down, the earth would melt. You know, we really we really have no conception of, of, of God and how, with what honor. We're supposed to treat Hashem. You know, we don't treat davening properly. We don't learn properly very often. We don't take it seriously. And, and we're seeing that even the angels, the, the angels who are these holy angelic beings that we can't even, according to many, see. We wouldn't be able to see with our own eyes. They're so holy. Even they tremble in front of Hashem. We really have no concept what God is. Kol shechein b'nei adam. So all the more so humans, so if we see that angels are trembling before God, all the more so human beings, us, shiirgazu v'yirashu b'la adam shlifnei Hashem. If angels who always stand in front of Hashem are trembling, compared to us, who it's very easy for us to do something uh, not uh, according to the glory of Hashem, right? Forget uh, sinning. Well, we, we, even the, the mitzvahs that we do aren't befitting, often aren't befitting the glory of Hashem. This is what Alifa said to Job. What is a man that he should be worthy? How should a a uh, human f- of flesh, uh, the birth, someone who was birthed from a woman, how should he be righteous? Hain Bikdosha of Loyamin, whether it's in his, uh, the holy hosts, he can't believe, he can't trust, Vishamayim Lozaku Be'enav. But he can't have faith in his holy beings, and the hosts of heaven are not pure in his eyes. And he says, So it's saying that if if Hashem could find fault, even with the angels, imagine with us, with human beings. Therefore a person has to always tremble. Like Elihu said, So with this a person should be afraid and jump in Mekomo from his place. Shimu Shemo Berogas Kolo. Listen well, as in fury he gives voice. Zoisi ayir amiti sheroi leish hachasid she tia upon of tamid velosasir manu. This is the type of fear that a person should strive to achieve, and he should not veer from it. So we learned 
three types of fear. The first type of fear, the Ramchal said we talked about last week, that's a fear of punishment, which he said anybody can really get a fear of punishment. It's a very logical fear. And we mentioned that nowadays, even that's hard for people. And the second and third types are the real types of fear that a person should get is fear of Hashem's awesomeness and fear of sin. Ach, chelke ha'ira hazo the there are two parts of this type of fear of sin. Ha'echad hu b'hayva of asid. One type is in the present or the future. Ve'asheni be'avar, and the second is in the past. A person should be afraid of sin in the past. How are, we'll see what that means. Behovehu in the present, shia adam yare v'doegam ashu oise. A person should be afraid of what he's doing. O ma'ashu holech l'asas penye b'davar. What he's going to do. Maybe there's a sin. Maybe there's something he doesn't realize. There's going to be a little bit of sin in what he's doing. Oh, penye kanez bo eze davar. Asher lo lefich vodo yizbarach. Kumashe kazaf yilel. Or maybe he's about to do something that uh, is not worthy of Hashem's uh, of Hashem's honor. That's in the present or the future. So, over who? What does it mean in the past? What does it mean to have fear of sin in the past? Shia adam chayshiv tamir amashik varas. A person should think and reflect about the deeds that he's done. Ve'yira ve'yidag pen yatsa mitachas yada ve'ezechik b'lo sheyeda. Maybe there's some sin that he did. He didn't even realize. Like would bring a sacrifice every day because maybe he did a sin. Uh, after the Eov, Job, after the feast of his children, Eov would say, maybe my children have sinned. And this is very appropriate now during the 10 days of repentance. This is the time of year when we reflect on uh, on the on the on the past year, maybe we've sinned, and maybe there's things we're not even uh, not even aware that we did, or maybe we could have done better. I'm sure we all could have done better. We're human beings, of course, we could have all done better. In a way, to you know, there's the sins that we know we did, and then there's sins that we're not even aware of. If a person takes the book Shari Tshuva, the Gates of Repentance, and you look in the uh, Shar Gimel, the third section, he lists a lot of common sins that people violate throughout the year, and they don't even realize that they're doing it. It's a very worthy uh, practice during the 10 days of repentance, and even before, and the whole year really, to read this book, but especially now, to read the third section of Shari Tshuva, to see maybe there's some sins that we, you know, we didn't even know it was a sin, so we can do Tshuva, because when we do Tshuva, when we repent, if we repent out of love, those sins get turned into mitzvos, which is, uh, is very good. Hashem gives us such a gift to, to repent and to do better. And if we do better and we repent, it's like we never did the sin. That's like I said, they turn into mitzvahs. And this is the time of year where Hashem's calling to us. He's begging us to do tshuva. He commands us to do tshuva, to come back to Him. Okay, so let's um, let's continue a little bit more. Let's finish the chapter. The rabbi said, Regarding the anointing oil, Moshe anointed Aaron with the oil to make him the high priest. Shemashach Moshe la'aron shari nemarbo al besar adam la'yisach so Moses was commanded, Moshe was commanded to anoint Aaron with this holy oil. Now usually one was not allowed to use the holy oil. So, but in this case was an exception. Moshe was commanded to use this holy oil to anoint Aaron. Now Moshe was afraid, you know, maybe I didn't do it properly, or maybe I made a mistake, and I committed an act of me'ilah, which is using holy things improperly. Even though he was commanded to do it with Aaron, since usually he was commanded not to use it at all, he thought maybe he made a mistake. So a heavenly voice came out and said, It is like the dew of Hermon, meaning just like the dew of Mount Hermon is, is um, not holy, so too uh, the oil that you use for Aaron there was nothing wrong with what you did. Meaning, just like you could use the dew of Mount Hermon for whatever you need, so too you use this oil properly. But Aaron was worried. Maybe he did something wrong. A heavenly voice came out and said, That is the way, that is the way of the righteous, that even when they're doing a mitzvah, they think maybe they didn't do it the way that they were supposed to do it. No, so let's see another example. Avraham, 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 we know, went to fight a war to save his nephew Lot. Maybe he uh, didn't, maybe he did something that was wrong. I mean, he had to fight a war to save his nephew, which is just. 
So it's al- 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 tira Avram. It said, don't worry, Avram. Don't be afraid, Avram. Rav Levi Yomar, Rav Levi said, Lafisha Avram is pachet ve'omri pain. Kol uchlusun sharakti shemahaya b'neim tzadik echad yorish me'echad. Maybe amongst all those people that I killed in the war, maybe there was a righteous person or someone who was afraid of heaven I shouldn't kill, I've killed. Lafikach nemer lo. Therefore he said to him, al tira Avram, don't don't be afraid, Avram. Ve'omru b'tana de'vel yo, and the tana de'vel yo, it says, al tira Avram, don't be afraid, Avram. Ain omrim al tira it only uses the phrase Altira for someone who really fears Hashem. This is the true fear, as it says. Hashem is only in this world, in the Otser, in the storehouse of fear of heaven. The only person that it was easy to get this type of fear was Moshe, because he was so close to Hashem. The fact that we are physical beings makes it difficult to achieve this fear. Uh, but nevertheless, even though it's difficult, every every pious person should try to achieve this type of fear. As it says, Fear Hashem, O His Holy Ones. And with that, we finish the chapter of Fear of Sin. So we learned in this chapter that there are three types of fear. Fear of punishment, fear of Hashem's awesomeness, and fear of sin. And specifically now, during the ten days of repentance, we can analyze our deeds. The aspect of fear of sin in the past, of analyzing what we did over the past year, what we could have done better, what we can improve on and do tshuva and repent. And we can look at the third section of Shari Tshuva. And the way we do that, how do we repent? We First of all, we stop doing the sin. Then we feel bad about it. And we confess in front of Hashem. Said, Hashem, I did this sin in front of you. And number three, we tell Hashem we're not going to do it again. We try our best to not do it again. And with that, I wish everyone an easy fast and a gemar simatova.